better. Now, Sarah, I am really, really, really looking forward to talking to you today. But before I start, um, let me just um, introduce you. Your name is um, Sarah Roberts. I was about to say Robertson then. <laughs> Roberts, not Sarah Galaxy Tab A7, as it's said. No, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, basically, we we connected on Instagram, didn't we? We did. And 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 then we had a chat last week on the phone. And your story is your story so far. I'm going to say is is pretty emotional. And and basically, we decided that we would then share your story um, with everybody else because you think maybe you can you can help others by highlighting what you've been through. Yeah. So, tell me well where do we begin should we go right back if you want to yeah, yeah. Um, okay so um i basically started um fainting in school um when i was sort of like day one day two of my period when i was about 14 um very 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 heavy periods um where i dreaded going into school um because i would come through i would wear two pairs of tights two pairs of knickers lots of sanitary towels because i would just be so um i'd be so heavy and the pains would be unbearable where i would pass out in class i would be sick in the playground <laughs> um and i i mean i fainted on on the track field and I spent half of half of the day at the tuck shop um, trying to eat as much chocolate as I could to get as much energy into me just to get myself through until home time. Um, it, at this point, how old were you? I was about fourteen, I think. Oh, I think. God. I think. Well, I think I was a year, year nine, year ten. And and you thought this was just what periods were? Well. <laughs> I mean, my mum, I was very blessed. My mum used to sit me down and talk to me all about periods and sex. And, you know, she was very, very open. So I was very lucky in that respect. Um, but I just, because people talk about period pain, like women have period pain, I just assumed that was period pain. And I, I suppose I look back and I think in an, in an unjust way, I was very hard on myself because I thought, why am I the only person that can't cope with a period? Why is, you know, what on earth is the matter with me? So I used to sort of cheer myself along and just think, you know, everyone else gets on with it. And I think in them days, you know, maybe I had a different circle of friends there. Obviously we grow up, we, you accept who you are more, so you are more open. So the conversations I have now with my best friends, I would never have had as a teenager and you didn't talk about your period I was always very aware and very insecure about it I was very embarrassed um I think I developed very young as well so you know I was I was I, you know I was you know big boobs and you know but still a very sort of teenager sort of body um so I used to hide you know hide away from from boys because it was just a very very difficult time um when I started fainting and having severe diarrhea in school to the point where I just didn't want to go into school that week in my period, my mum was like, this is not real normal, we need to get you to the doctors. And so we went to the GP, a lovely GP, I have to say she was lovely, she, was, she listened. Um, I can't really remember, if I'm completely honest, if I told her how severe my periods were because I was embarrassed by them. But I did explain that, you know, my symptoms, I was bleeding heavy. I had these big clots where I felt as though my insides were coming out, but I didn't understand what they were. And the more, the, the worst thing was with the diarrhea, because obviously in school with, you know, toilets that were shared and stuff, it was just, I just couldn't cope. So um, she put me on the pill at that age um, and I was really left on that um, until I was probably getting on for 20 um did she so did she explain to you when you went to the doctor i mean these are severe symptoms aren't they yeah these yeah well i look back now and they were very very severe but at the time i thought well because she said unfortunately this is what being a woman is you know welcome to the world of being a woman you know that this is we've basically we've got to suck it up and see so i did and it's it's not until i got 
later on in life and it wasn't until I unfortunately started this journey of trying for a baby and um, my treatments failing so I then had to go and sort of find answers myself and I went to an acupuncturist who specializes in fertility and I she said you know explain what your periods are like but you know tell me and I and I, and I explained and she was like oh god that this, this is not normal a period you bleed you stop that's a period everything that I described to her she's just said that's just it's abnormal she said you're stagnant you're holding on to your body's holding on to your period so I'd have about five days before I actually used to come on the period where I had this really stagnant brown stain um, and it was awful but I just thought it my body was trying to come on its period because you're not taught about this nobody tells you what your periods are meant to be they you know so what was that then before your period so she said it was stag stagnation so it was from the I, I think what how she described it was it was from a period before that my body was holding on to it mm. so it was a little bit like it was like brown mud and I remember the, now I've not always had that I'd say I've had that in the past eight or nine years um, and I just thought your body changes. I'd, I'd had a coil fitted um, because I had other gynae problems in my 20s. So I'd had a coil fitted and I'd had that taken out. And I thought maybe that's just, you know, the aftermath of, of having a coil. Um, and when it first came, I, I thought it was poor, if I'm being honest with you. And I was like, oh my God. Um, and it, you know, it, 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 it wasn't. And when I described it to her, she was like, no, that's just not normal. It's, that's not what a period is. A period is your lining going and you bleed and you, and you finish your period and that is it. You shouldn't have, you know, people have period pains, but you shouldn't have period pains where you are rolling around in agony. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just... And this was your fertility this was an acupuncturist did you say yeah so when i'd when i'd been to so i've i'd had um clomed for a few years and i'd had um one round of ivf on the nhs so that was 18 months ago it was june just as we were into the pandemic and it failed um and i was about to start a second cycle and one of my patients actually she was going through IVF and we sort of connected and she said you know you want to start looking at Zeta West she's this um fabulous lady she's got a clinic down in London um and have you know have a little look on that um on her website so I started following this and I didn't feel 100% connected because I think in my head I hadn't actually come to terms with the fact I'd been told I couldn't have a baby and I think it takes me a long time to absorb that sort of information and I didn't know anybody else who'd been through this and mm. um, unbeknownst to me I didn't realize how common unfortunately this is so as I googled Zeta West I found that she has these affiliated acupuncturists dotted around the, the country and I was so 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 lucky because um, the lady I go to is Zeta West affiliated, and I found her. In fact, I actually think she—I believe she found me actually. Um, and she's affiliated by Zeta West. And yeah, I think I'd say that's the beginning of my journey of of healing, really, and try of coming to terms, actually understanding my body. But why why did it take you having a round of Clomid? And a round of IVF before somebody actually said, "Ah, oh, hang on, you've got endometriosis." No, nobody's ever told me. No one's ever told me. It's only my acupuncturist that, when I described it to her, she said, "Oh, when did you? When were you diagnosed with endometriosis?" But I've never actually had a a, 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 a GP or a doctor diagnose me or test me for it. So when, when, the, when the doctor said, yes, okay, IVF is the right route for you to parenthood, or at least let's try it, yeah. did they explain why? What, what, is your, what did they say was your infertility cause? So my, my infertility is called unexplained infertility. That's it. That's all I've ever been told. So did they, and did they talk to you about your periods? And, and... No, no, no. That makes me no. Mean. um yeah there's been a, there's there's been a lot of tears and a lot of screaming over this 
um, yeah. So they just said unexplained. Um, so unexplained infertility. That so there was never talk about your cycles, how they were. They asked me about my. They asked me about my periods, and I said I am because I was like clockwork. Every twenty eight days, I was. And I could tell you, I mean, my husband could tell you um, when I was going to come on my period. I had symptoms and I could, because of, because of the symptoms I had and the job I do, I was very lucky that I can actually sort of plan my own clinics. I would plan my clinics and patients around my periods. Mm -hmm. And I would think, well, I would book heavy duty. Because you're a you? because I know that I can, I can cope with doing simple, quick treatments on patients if I have to dash to the toilet run and go and get a chocolate bar go and have a sit down for five minutes I, I could get through the day um but they've they, they just asked me you know do you have periods and I do I have I used to have regular periods but, and I think that's when I never thought I would never never get pregnant because my body had been so cruel to me I just thought well oh my goodness the minute we start trying we'll we'll get caught immediately because I have a period every month and they're that painful you know I must be, you know, do you know what I mean? It, it, it never occurred to me that my body was actually trying to tell me something was wrong. And you, I had medicine. Were you sort of, they said I wasn't ovulating. So I went to that. So I went to the, I was referred to the clinic quite late, really, because we, we sort of put our, putting our, we got married a little bit later. Um, we changed jobs we started different careers and we just wanted an extra two years so we didn't start trying till I was about 32 and um, just as I was qualifying and then um, I think I just went to the GP for something very random and um, she said oh are you gonna have babies and I said oh we're, we're trying you know we're, we're not we're not using any contraception anymore and as and when and then I went back 12 months later for something else and she said oh so that was when she referred me um, I just assumed it would happen when it happened um, very ignorantly um, but again you're not really taught that at school you're not really no, no of course you know, you know you're told how not to get pregnant oh my god I know which makes you want to scream when, yeah. you're, when your first round of IVF failed and you I hate the word fail I'm sorry to I'm sorry to use that word well it did yeah but when but then when you went back to the clinic to have your you know a discussion about what happens and what your next steps are what can you remember what they said to you um so they were very sorry that it hadn't worked I've been told that my embryo had was perfect that was what they told me it was perfect embryo it was a perfect transfer and you know we all help hope for the best and I rung them about four or five days later and I said I'm, I'm bleeding but I don't I mean you you pray to anything out there that it's implantation bleeding in my heart I knew it wasn't it was it was heavy um they still made me wait for two weeks to do the pregnancy test and they just said yeah we're very sorry it's not worked um I had a Zoom call then with the consultant and he, you know, and you have to feel sorry for them. It must be, you know, it's awful news to give people and I do sympathise with them. Um and they he just said, you know, we can have another go. Um at that point they hadn't discussed, they just discussed having another go and trying sort of as soon as possible. Um so we had another go. Um my body i i know now through various blood tests that i've had done and paid privately through other companies through sort of the holistic route my body was in no fit state to carry an embryo ever um it, it stood no chance whether it was perfect or not um but we had another go um and at that point i'd started to look at acupuncture and i'd got in contact with my acupuncturist and I said, am I a little bit too late? She said, well, whatever we can do, we can, you know, we, we can we can work with what we've got at the moment. And then at that point at that, as just as I was going for my egg collection, I hadn't stimulated enough. I hadn't responded well to the drugs, even though I was on the highest, highest dose of drugs. Um, so it was abandoned just before egg collection. And had they had they done had had endometriosis, the, the word being brought up, so it still had been brought up. Did you Never. have any like further investigations, any other tests or? 
So the only other, the only tests I've ever had done with the clinic is to check my AMH, which, which was to check if my egg reserve, and I was told it was 1.6, I think, and that must be about three years ago. Mm -hmm. um, that was the only test um, they'd ever recommended. Mm -hmm. I'd never had, um, oh, and the ov obviously to see if I ovulated, um, which was before I had Clomid, but they were the only tests that were ever discussed. But they, di they, didn't, they didn't look for any you know, tests that show that there's scarring or blockages or anything like that? Oh, I had, um, is it called a high cosy? I had that done. Um, I had that done before I had Clomid and it showed that I had a tube blocked but they weren't worried because my other tube was working. So they said at that point, they don't worry um, if one tube is working. It just seems crazy, doesn't it? That endometriosis was ne has, has still not come up in conversation. Did you not want, did you not, not say to them, look, I, I think I've got endometriosis? No, because I didn't, I never, I never for one moment thought I did because I just, I just thought that was what a period was. It was only once I started seeing the acupuncturist. And if I'm being honest, it was probably too late down the line of IVF in the middle of a pandemic. Um, you know, I'd mentioned about having, um, I'd mentioned about having my tube unblocked and the consultant said we could have a go at that. But because of the waiting list now, because of the pandemic, all the, you know, all the elective surgeries are on hold. And I work in a general hospital myself, so I, I completely understand those pressures. Um, he said, you know, we're probably not going to gain much from that. So, um, but we'd never, the only other time I'd ever been told I had, it looked like I had scarring um, was when I'd had a, a, a funny smear test when I was a lot younger. And it was when I started to have a lot of gynae problems in the 20s, um, which, were, which were quite severe. Um, I couldn't have um, intercourse for about six years um, because it, it was just so painful. Um, so they, they sent me for counselling to see if I'd had trauma as a child or something like that. But I was like, no, it's a physical pain. It's not, this is a physical pain and feeling. And it was only until I saw about six years later, I saw a GP with a specialist interest in gynae. She said, I think you've been on the pill far too long. Um, and then she said the scarring was from all the, from the, the years of, of the pill. She said it was just too long to be on the pill, but I, I couldn't function without it. Um, so where has that left you now? Like how, you say you're, you say you're, you know, you're seeing your acupuncturist. How is your body now? I think my body is probably the healthiest it's ever been. Um, I've used a lot of, I've done a lot of research. Um, I've used my acupuncturist to help guide me into healing mentally, physically, emotionally, I suppose spiritually in a way. Um, and I've found other ladies that look after me and have tried everything they can to try and help my body recover and Try and try naturally to have have my baby. Um, how do you how do you, how do you now not have you know the sickness, the fainting, all those horrific side effects that you used to have? How do you not have those acupuncture? So I had one. I had one. So it was August. So it'll be. It was eighteen months ago in all, like August. It was. Um, not August, just been, sorry, the, the year before. Um, and I went to her for one visit and she, it was a bit like a counselling session to begin with. And then you have a treatment afterwards for your first appointment. And um, she did one treatment on me and I've never, I've never had a period like it since. Wow. Yeah. That is incredible. Yeah. I, I, have, I have to say, I used acupuncture on my last and final round of IVF. Yeah. And just as you said that I used my acupuncturist like my counsellor. Yeah, yeah. She's um she she should be bottled and given to every single lady on the entire planet. She's just incredible. So um wonderful then that that what she's doing for you is actually easing the symptoms of um, of um endometriosis. Yeah. So I don't have I don't bleed like I used to. The stagnation went within that first. So my first period after acupuncture, 
I actually messaged her. I thought, I don't, I don't know how she, this is a period because it just wasn't a period that I was used to. It was what she'd said, you'll come on your period, you'll bleed red blood and you will finish. And that was it. Um, and it was the only thing that changed with my periods is they became a lot longer. And I don't think that's to do with the acupuncture. I think that's actually what she's done for me. Is she's basically unraveled 26 years of misdiagnosis, contraceptive pill, hormones, and all of that. I feel as though she's unraveled me and I've gone back to what I would have been. I feel as though this is what I would have had if I hadn't had those periods. So, um, very, that is very emotional, actually. Yeah, yeah. It's been a journey. I mean, we've she she's changed she's changed my life. She's changed my entire life. Um my hormones, my the way I deal with things, the way I um see the world, that the way I the way everything everything I am and do now is because of her. Oh my gosh, what's her name? Her name is Jackie Fairweather. Jackie Fairweather. Yeah, but I call her my angel. <laughs> she is my angel. Amazing. Yeah, and I is. suppose your hindsight would then be, you know, if, if only Jackie had been in your life all yeah. those years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But And we always say, you know, hindsight's a great thing. So we can't use our own. But actually, so would you then encourage young people to, to go and see an acupuncturist, you know, yeah. if they're in a similar situation that well, you are in? Yeah. I mean, my best friend and I, who we've... I mean, we've, we've, she's cried just as many tears as I have over this. And we always say, you know, if someone had stood in a school hall, you know, a small group of girls, you know, take a class, take a class at a time and stood and held a sanitary towel up and said, if your sanitary towel looks anything like this, you come and see us because this isn't normal and it's not embarrassing. You don't have to be scared it's confidential we won't you know with it's it's not gonna you know the playground aren't gonna know about it but come and see us because it's not normal mm -hmm. and it's your body's way of telling you you're poorly because I was I was poorly I was I was ill um I'd say six months out of my every year was lost because of period symptoms because every I would have symptoms to a week before my period and then horrific symptoms of my period so you know 26 years I suffered with that so that's 13 years of, of, of suffering. Are you part of any endometriosis support groups or anything like that? No I mean I follow a few on online but I because I've never had that diagnosis mm. I'm a bit reluctant to say I've got endometriosis but from what I've read and from what I've been told I believe I probably have had a form of it mm. um but I, I do, I, I, I do follow people on Instagram. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's just, I, the, the, hearing your story, the thing that really upsets me is almost the fact that you were just dismissed by your GP. Yeah. You know, sometimes I, I, I was put on the pill because I've got polycystic ovaries. No one actually really explained to me what polycystic ovaries meant. No. no. I, I was just told, right, okay, so your periods are irregular. Okay, go, go off, off you go, take the pill. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I just I I I didn't know what was didn't know what was happening, mm. you know. Just took it, and then years later, couldn't figure out why I couldn't get pregnant. And it's your body, you, but your body's trying to, and you're disconnected from your body. They disconnect you because, you know, if your if your leg hurts, there's a reason why your leg hurts. If your head hurts, there's a reason why your head hurts. But it's just all masked and. Um, um, and this is the consequence, you know, I'm, I'm, I've just turned 40 um, and I'm about five years through this journey um, and I've still not got a baby to show for it, um, which is when I was little and everybody was asking, you know, when you're asked what you want to be when you're older, my answer was always, I want to be a mum. That's all I ever want. I always I ever wanted to be a mum. I was still playing with dolls by the, by the age of 12 because I just wanted to be a mum. Um, that's all I've ever, ever wanted. Um, so, Do you know, I, honestly, I love that you've just said that because I was still playing with dolls when I was 12. <laughs> yeah. 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 
out loud to anybody and I'd love that you've just yeah. <laughs> that's, all I, that's all I ever wanted yeah yeah you are you ovulating now you said you you weren't ovulating has so I, I believe I do now um because I have um so I see and so through my acupuncturist she put me in touch with another lady that does um sound bath meditation which I've never heard of before and if anybody is ever thinking about doing it go and do it it's such an an amazing um experience and i told her name sean and i told her what what my problems were and um she has been working on me for about nine months now i go maybe once a month maybe two two or three times a month maybe um depending on money and you know how, where i am you know um in in life but i go and see her regularly and she will do these sound she uses sound bowls and um, the heat the healing of sound and she will work on me um and it's very painful and um, not so much now but it has been in the past and how, through that sorry how is it painful um it feels as though um someone's stabbing you oh my god in a nice way in a very nice way you feel sort of flutters and sort of pinchy you feel pinchy in areas where you're blocked and her sound and instruments unblock you wow. so she works around your chakras she will work around your aura um so the first time i went it was all in my head and it was sort of here and in my head and gradually it's gone all the way down and it's only now ever around my ovaries the tops of my legs um, and I know, I know that she's unblocking me. So through her, I now believe I ovulate because I have ovulation symptoms. I never knew you, you, you had discharge. I've never had discharge. And now I have um, the eggshell ovulation um, discharge. And I have that very, very regularly. And I've had that now for about four months, four or five months, I've had ovulation discharge. And I've never, ever had that before. What do you um, put on the ovulation sticks? Pardon? You know the ovulation sticks? I don't tend to use those only because um, I just, I just, I just don't, I just don't tend to use those. Um, I've been trying to go with my gut instinct and what my body is sort of showing me monthly. And then I bought a Ava brace. I don't know if you've ever heard of those. Yeah. yeah. And um and I and I use one of those and that predicts my ovulation and it and it goes day by day around it tells me when I'm ovulating and my discharge is mapping that as well. So I feel using my body and my Ava app that's um that's really helped me. Yeah. It's what's so fascinating is to hear you now so in control of your body. So yeah. you've gone from having your body control you with absolutely no support around you to now you being in control yeah. and having people close by that are really looking out for you and, yeah. and, and people that are understanding your body. And that yeah. is, that's just so encouraging and inspiring. Yeah. It just makes me, it makes me want to not lose you because I want to yeah. keep going with you. I want to, I can't wait to be there. Yeah. You phone me and you say, Sara, it's worked. <laughs> I can't wait for that day either. <laughs> you yeah. said you know that day is coming, didn't you? On the first I've seen I've I've seen a baby. I've been told off because I've only ever really seen a girl. Um and a lady got in contact with my acupuncturist because I blog on, on, a, on an Instagram site. It's a private one that I just use for myself. And um, that I try and support all the women with as well, but I I don't have my friends and family on that. That's that's my sacred space. And um, this lady must have followed me through my acupuncture lady, and um, she said, "Tell her to stop. Tell her to stop with the girl. She might be blocking the boy." So uh, when I go to sound bath now, I have a, um, a boy teddy and I have a girl teddy that I keep with her. So I've got Babs and Barney, mm -hmm. and they come with me and they have a cuddle, and we heal together and we visualize. We visualise me being a, being their mum, and that's what I feel um, is what's been the biggest thing that's working for me um, away from the clinics. Um, 
I've been told that they won't, they'll never do IVF on me again with my own eggs because the last, um, so I had another course of IVF in June last year. They gave me DHEA to try and raise my progesterone and um, my um, testosterone, but it, end, it ended in an eggless egg collection, which I'd, I'd never understood really, but there were no eggs in the follicles. Mm -hmm. um, so they said they won't do that again. So my only other option with IVF is to have an egg donor. Um, which I, I found the hardest to hear um, and it's taken me a long time to come to terms with that but it's funny because just behind me here there's, um, there's a little plaque that I look at every day and it's from Beatrix Potter it's Jemima Puddle Duck and she says I, I wish to hatch my own eggs and I will hatch them all by myself and I use that as an affirmation every day to to tell my body that I am 40 but I, I'm working, I'm working now more than I've ever, my body's ever worked before and I'm just not ready to give up on myself and my eggs. Um, so whether I need an egg donor, in you know, it, I, I might do, but at the moment I'm, I'm trusting myself and I'm trusting my journey mm -hmm. and I'm trusting what, you know, I don't feel as though this has been, this has happened to me for, for no reason. I feel as though I've had to heal to be the person I am today, to probably be the, the best mum I can ever be and to hold my baby and thank God every day that I've been blessed and that's how I feel, so, yeah. I, well, I need to have a picture of, of Jemima Paddle Duck. I think <laughs> it is, that is such a, such a beautiful affirmation and such a lovely thing that you do every day. Yeah. You're so inspiring, Sarah. <laughs> really 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 are i'm just and and listen i need to just look you're also so beautifully kind because you <laughs> made this for me didn't you i did my little rainbows tell us, tell us about the rainbows so last year after my abandoned ivf i had a three-month period it didn't stop i was beyond broken physically, mentally, emotionally, I was broken. I couldn't, it, it wouldn't stop. I was on lots of hormones through the clinic to try and stop the period. Um, I was having regular acupuncture and my acupuncture said, you know what, as much as it's awful, she said, I do believe your body's just having an almighty clear out mm -hmm. and I trusted her. Um, but through the hormone treatment that I was having through the clinics, I felt as though I was getting depressed. I was off work because I couldn't, I couldn't function. I couldn't treat children and do the job I do and look after children and, you know, be in charge of tools, feeling the way I did. I hadn't, I had nothing in me. So I was off work for a while and I felt as though I was getting depression, which I've never had before. Um, and it was just this thick cloud of smoke and I couldn't, I could see you, but I couldn't focus. I, I couldn't, I just couldn't focus and I thought I've got to get back to work this is you know my babies need me my service need me I've got to get back to work what on earth am I going to do am I ever going to get better am I ever going to stop bleeding I, I was just lost so I looked on YouTube and looked at sort of crafty things and I've never been crafty or arty in my life but it's just not me I leave all that to my husband um you know and and I thought maybe if I can just do something to make and focus so I started making the rainbows um for family for myself and I just used to leave them to one side unravel them again and then I thought because I know rainbows are when I see sort of IVF um, stories on Instagram, people have, tend to have these little rainbows. And I thought, I'm going to use one of those for my next round of IVF. And then I thought, maybe I could sell them and donate some of the money to, to yourselves because I feel as though you've got to give back to our community. I think we're, we're, we're women, we're girls, and we should all be supporting girls. And what you do with, with, your, with your Instagram, has taught me a lot it's inspired me a lot and so for me I just wanted to give a bit back to you so um so I sell them on Instagram um and I love making them um and the one I've made for you I thought it's the pineapple sign so that is um that's for our community that one yeah that's that's ours 
I just love it so much. And, <laughs> and like you said, so, so the ones you sell, you're donating a small percentage to Babel, yeah. Community, which is the IVF Babel charity, which yeah. is, oh, so, so kind of you. Yeah. You, you are honestly, Sarah, an amazing woman. Thank you. And I, and I, and I really hope that people watching this, you know, can, can pass it on as well to perhaps, you know, younger people, younger women in their families yeah. who don't yet know what's really happening with their body and might recognize some of the things that you've said and yeah. go to their doctor and say, look, this is what I'm, this is what I'm experiencing. Can you test me? Can you help me understand what's going on? Yeah. And then like you said, reach out to perhaps, you know, um, an acupuncturist who can yeah. help, yeah. Who help you. And a nutritionist. I mean, I found a nutritionist who's um, all about women's health, hormones, and she's been very, very helpful. And through her, I've had various blood tests. And this blood test I had um, basically looked under what was going on in, from, from a cellular level. And that it showed that I was racked with inflammation. I had masses of inflammation. Um, so now I take an oil every day and that has helped regulate my hormones. I've done another blood test since taking it. It's brought my inflammation levels right the way down. So I know now if I, well, when I get pregnant, I should say, my body is in the best, best place it can be. But it's no one tells you in the clinics, no one tells you about omega-3 being so key in fertility and pregnancy. Mm. And that most of us are, have got inflammation because of today's diets, not through any fault of our own, but just because of the way food's produced. No, one no one's ever told me that. Vitamin D. Um, I mean, I was taking omega-3 um, and, it, was, and I, it still wasn't enough for me to not have inflammation in my body um so there's just so much there's so much i've learned and there's so much to learn um but it's so hidden it's so hidden and because it's not the norm and it's not you know because my doctor didn't tell me about it yes you know it's not sort of mainstream yeah it, it would be really lovely to catch up with you in a few months time yeah. just so that we can share again with, with people watching, you know, where, where you are again and, and to see how yeah. your, your acupuncture and the sound healing yeah. is, is helping. I think that would be a really lovely thing to, to follow your journey <laughs> to motherhood. Sarah, I want to say thank you again. Oh, just you're very welcome. Thank you for having me. Now, I'll put underneath the video some links where people can find you. So what's your Instagram account that people can use? So my Instagram account is um, my secret infertility journey. Um, and it's got, this is the picture, um, which is a little heart with another affirmation, which says, remember you are braver than you believe, stronger than you feel and smarter than you think. So that's my, that's my Instagram. And um, my rainbow page is called Bessie and Jessie which are named the little rag dolls and they're named after my nans who both had um, fertility journeys themselves. Uh, one of my nans had a miscarriage, was told she'd never have a baby again, adopted my uncle and then she was blessed with my dad. Oh my. And then, I know, I know. And then my mum's mum um, had a baby with spina bifida and he died after being two weeks old. So I just feel as though they're both, they're both with me um, on this journey and I wanted to play tribute to them through my little rainbow page so you are a beautiful human you really are thank you thank you so much sarah right this this is this is just the beginning it is yes <laughs> all right darling thank you you're very welcome